Hey guys, welcome to Blonity and to my BMX version 0.8 on Sunday. So first my little disclaimer is no financial advice, my own opinion and estimates. My estimates could be completely wrong, don't trust, always verify, understand the numbers, be aware of scammers and I'm sure that you know the best how to invest your money. You should be your own financial advisor. That's my honest opinion. And please be aware that I'm invested in all these companies I show you today. So I'm very bullish on this, so please keep that always in mind. So let's get into it. So guys, we had a price drop last week, and but if you freak out, zoom out. Uh, here we have the long time scale here, the Bitcoin 2017 pump to 20,000 US dollars. Then we had the bear market. I went through this bear market. Um, I was big in big red here, but I recovered here. And especially here since September, we are going, yeah, let's say vertical here and we are right now here. So when we zoom out, nothing happened. Okay. So, um, yeah, what happens next? When we see here in the last bull market in 2017, we had these two runs here and we can see them here and here. So uh, when we surpassed the Fibonacci one here, uh, we had a big increase like this time. From the 20,000 was Fibonacci 1 and then we surpassed the 1.61 and yeah, we moved. And yeah, we can see this here and then we formed this triangle here. And then we had a huge drop, but very short term, then we recovered and then we had the next leg up. So I want to say um, it's not impossible that we break out to the downside here. But I think it's going to be very short term if we do this. And then we find support here maybe on the 30,000 or 27,000. I don't know. I'm not a trader or so. But um, it looks very similar to me. And yeah, it's possible that we break up to the down, uh, to the upside, break out to the upside. Or we're going sideways for a while. Or we go to the downside. But the only thing I want to say, um, don't freak out if we break to the downside and do panic selling or so. Um, I will wait here for the recovery and then we make the next move and you can see here it was very fast and then we are going to 100,000 or so. Um, so uh, yeah, if, if we take the, the chart of 2017, the next step would be 100,000 or so or 80,000. I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah, please keep that in mind. Um, it's going to be an exciting week, I guess. So um, yeah, keep always the big picture in mind. We are right now here at 35,000 or so. Here's the 200,000. This is my target. We don't know whether we can reach it, but maybe we will surpass it or maybe we peak out at 100,000 or so. But we are very early here and this is my target here. So yeah, it's still very, we're very low here. And yeah, so no stress here. So the long time scale here, we had these bull runs here, 2013, 2017. Yeah, and we are right now here. So this is the logarithmic logarithmic uh, scale here for um, here and yeah the next target is here the 200,000 then we go to another bear market I guess and the next one is 1 million so this is the long term goal here 200,000 then bear market 4 years later 1 million so we are on track here with this we pumped a little bit too much here so we recover a little bit or we consolidate a little bit yeah, and then we move on, I guess, to the uh, into the direction of two hundred thousand US dollars. And another big picture here um, from Econometrics here on Twitter, which is very nice. So here we have the last two bull runs. Uh, the line down here, this one, is the two thousand seventeen bull run, which peaked at twenty thousand here. And here we have the two thousand thirteen bull run, which was a lot more dynamic because Bitcoin was a lot smaller. And yeah, we can see here we're way above after the, this is after the halving here. Here the halving took place, and yeah, we are right now way above the 2017 bull run. You can see it here. Um, yeah, if we follow the line of 2017, we should be right now at 20,000 or so, but we are at 40,000. And yeah, that looks very nice. Um, I mean, it's 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 obviously um, we have a we, we print a lot of money right now and the money has to go somewhere into the safe heavens and and Bitcoin is the safe heaven, so yeah um, I I think uh, I expect this to continue, if we follow the average line here this is this line of these two bull runs, we could peak at three hundred eighty seven thousand here, um, yeah but this would be in May twenty twenty one so this would be very early, I expect later um, yeah but everything is possible. 
please keep that in mind we are going very straight up here so everything looks fine only the short term is a little bit bearish maybe but uh, yeah we don't know maybe we will uh, we will um, rise in price next week uh, we could down we could go down a little bit no one knows okay but let's jump to the data the operational excellence here from uh, yeah the the opex 10 here this is the um, gross mining margin the 10 day moving average here so hive still at 300,000 here um, we can see this year last week was uh, the difference beti between opex 10 and opex 30 was a lot um, bigger last time but now it uh, decreased yeah because of this weak sideways or downside action so uh, in the short term we are a little bit uh, yeah bearish here and then the long run here from the opex 30 to opex 90 uh, it's it's a lot better. We can see it everywhere here. Yeah, guys, please be aware that Bit Digital. There's an investigation here. We don't know whether they have the miners or not. So I'm not invested in Bit Digital right now. But I will track the data um, until we know it is is it a scam or not. So please be aware of that. Bit Digital is very very risky right now. Yeah. Okay. So I think in the next two weeks we have to increase this um, vertical scale here to five hundred thousand. Um, I started here with 100,000 uh, four weeks ago or so or six weeks ago. So we were here like 80,000 or so. We can see we're in a big bull run. Yeah, and that looks very nice. So operational excellence here, the mining profitability. What's really interesting is that we are now back at my model. So yeah, we uh, with the mining profitability of Bitcoin, we, we were a lot higher than my model here and I was thinking mm, maybe I have to adjust but now uh, we are dropping right now exactly to my model here. So this here is a circuit breaker here so forget this one but this here we are, we are down to 22 um, cents per day per terahash so we are following, following stock to flow and my model perfectly. So stock to flow from plan B I integrated this into my model and I calculated the mining profitability on this with a three time increase of the hash rate in 2021 so it looks right now very nice also ethereum we had this crazy rise here in the mining profitability i think this was um, yeah because of the fees on because of the DeFi on the blockchain but now we're back perfect on my model here so that looks also very nice and we have ccash here which is also back to my model here to close to five cents per per day per megasol um, so that looks also very nice. So um, yeah, it seems my model works. This is also a circuit breaker here. So forget about this drop here. Um, We're back on my model here, a little bit above here in Bitcoin, but yeah, very nice. Okay, so here we have the daily gross mining margins. We can see Hive always have these crazy um, rises here when there was DeFi. Um, Uniswap with the token launch and all the things um, that used a lot of fees on the Ethereum blockchain and that's very good for Hive blockchain. And we can see right now we're 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 very high. We had an all-time high here. Yeah, but we stay high here. This is very interesting. Also, Ethereum price increase like crazy. I think Ethereum is on a mission in the upcoming weeks, so we will soon break the all-time high of 1,400 US dollars. And then there's only uh, the sky is the limit or moon. I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah, th this could be very good for Hive. I mean, Ethereum mining, there are a lot of uncertainties there. It's 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 very risky. Um, ha the hash rate increases significantly right now because of all these Chinese, Chinese ASIC miners which come to the market. But um, yeah, in the short term, this is very profitable. And I hope Hive will, will use this cash for improvements in their strategy and yeah, in, in the Bitcoin mining, I guess. Okay, so let's move on. What's also interesting here is HUD8 uh, in Q3, we were negative. Yeah, there were some voices on Twitter and so they said, oh, HUD8, is, the margin is so bad. Yeah, but the margin is, is improving. And yeah, we are now in the, in the range of the others like Bitfarms Argo. Um, yeah, that looks very nice because they have cheap electricity. They have a, uh, had a lot of depreciation in the, in the last years, but now it's cheaper. And yeah, they, they make a lot of money right now in the operational side here with their miners. So it's not everything bad here with HUD-8. Um, it, it looks good. It looks good. The operational margin here or the cross mining margin. Yeah, the OPEC-3, my first indicator for my BMX and BMXI. Um, it means um, it's the 10 day moving average cross mining margin, the 30 day and the 90 day. And then we divide it to, uh, by three to um, get the focus here on the 10 day, most on the 10 day 
second on the 30 day and then the 90 because the the 10 days are in that also in the 90s and the 30 days are also in the 90s and the 10 days also in 30 and 90 so you have a, um, a higher weighting on the short term than on the long term i think this is important um, divided by three multiply 360 for one year so um, we can see here that um, yeah, we can see the, the consolidation right now in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we have here flat here for Hive blockchain. All these uh, these uh, OPEC 3 are flattening right now. So yeah, we need another rise uh, here for for um, for Bitcoin and Ethereum that these uh, miners will uh, increase again in OPEX 3, I guess. Number one, Hive, BitDigital number two here in this category, and BitFarms number three, HUD8 number four. Okay, let's move on. So then we have the HODL X. The HODL X first from last week, I want to show you. HUD8, uh, <laughs> clear, obviously number one here. Um, Hive number two, the suppressed right blockchain because of Ethereum price increase like crazy. They have a lot of Ethereum in their balance sheet. Yes, and this is last week. We can see here um, HUD8 was like 85 or so, 85 million in HODL X. So these are yeah, the Bitcoin holdings and some other KPIs I added, like the HODL speed and the collateral and all the things. But um, yeah, let's check the HODL X now and we're above 100 million um, US dollars. So um, people will ask why uh, the price dropped, um, it cannot increase. Yes, it is, um, they, they diluted a the stock and the collateral of uh, 20 million um, is now zero because they will um, pay the debt uh, they had with their um, dilution of the stock of the 60 million US dollars. They increased their their, their market cap, and um, yeah, and that's why they're rising here. So they don't have to sell their Bitcoin holdings, which is very good. They can keep their Bitcoins, and they will uh, will pay repay the the debt with the with the um, capital raise. So that's very nice, and that's why HUD8 is increasing here, big. And yeah, the HODL X is, is HUD8, you can see it here. And that looks very nice. So Q4 will look very, very different for HUD8 than Q3. And Q1 will also look very good for Hive uh, for HUD8. So HUD8 number one, Hive number two, and Ryan number three in HODL X. Then we have the third big indicator here, the Stratex three here on the time scale. We can see Hive still number one and increasing. HUD8 is dropping to number three here. Um, surpassed by right blockchain so in the stratex it's it's strategic excellence so it looks into the future like 180 days and yeah mara and riot they're increasing here very fast because they disclosed a lot of hardware for the upcoming month so will they have huge hardware increase but um yeah um, there's also risk that they don't get the hardware or so but um, in this model i don't have the risk here um, I expect that this all, these miners are all delivered in time. So you can see that yeah, these, these US miners are a little bit more risky because we don't know, do they get the miners? Is the facility working? I mean, with HUD8 or Argo blockchain or Bitfarms, the facilities or Hive blockchain, the f facilities are running right now. So um, they, they could do nothing right now or only run and they will make a lot of money. But yeah, with the US companies, it's different. So keep that in mind, please. When they tell you we will have 10 XFs at the end of the year, we will see. Um, I like this, these announcements because I'm a big fan of hash rate. But yeah, we, we need more information, I guess. Okay, so let's go to the BMX, the Blonity's Minor Excellence here in timescale. So still Hive on number one here. But HUD8 comes very close because of the nice increase in HODL X. And um, Riot is number three here. Okay, the BMXI, my most important indicator, uh, the Blonity's Miners Excellence indicator. This is the BMX divided by market cap. So it shows me um, every week which one is the most undervalued in my valuation model. And yeah, it's still HUD 8. I think it's the third week right now um, that they're in here number one. Um, yeah, I, I think with Argo it was, it was four or five weeks my number one in, in the BMXI from the the first model the 0 0.1 version it was always number one like it was like in the 60s so it was more undervalued than had eight yeah and uh, <laughs> then we had in 10 days we had 10x increase yeah and now they're in the middle they're on a fair value right now or it looks like and now there are others like had eight they're undervalued and the third week so 
yeah, it takes some time that the market figures out which one is the, right now the most undervalued. And it, it needs some time that the people swap into these um, shares. But with Argo, it worked out very well for me and uh, hopefully for you. And I think with this Canadian stocks, it will, will work also very nice. Um, yeah, it will need some time for, for Bitcoin to, to rise again. And then we will see these stocks here increase. Very interesting. Last week, it was Bitfarms number two. Now it's Hive number two. Um, yeah, because of the, of the big Ethereum uh, increase here. And Bitfarms here is number three. Argo blockchain number four. And we can see the market caps here. Um, we can see the, the the big US guys here at two billion. Bit digital, yeah, we 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 forget the bit bit digital right now. We need a statement or so, or we need an end of the investigation. We know, do they have the miners or not? Uh, right now, be careful with bit digital. Um, I will not uh, recommend to invest in this company right now. So Bit Farms has the smallest market cap right now. So this stock could be the most explosive when we have a Bitcoin um, increase or rise. But um, yeah, I think um, HUD8 is, is still the, the most undervalued right now because of the big Bitcoin holdings. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Here we have the time scale here. So yeah, here we had uh, Argo blockchain for, for a while here at number one here. And then we had this huge increase in price. So Argo blockchain dropped from 0 0.8 to 0 0.2 here. It was very short term number three. Yeah, then we had an increase. Yeah, but now it's HUD 8 is, is obviously number one. So this is all no financial advice, guys. Do your own research. Um, yeah, this, please be aware that this model is all about value. This has nothing to do with the price. Um, in my model, there's no emotion. Price is driven by emotion. So in my opinion, price catches always up with value, but it can take some time. It can last uh, one day or one week or one month we don't know uh, and that's why we're developing developing these strategies to um to understand the emotions but here is the part two blonities price per share maximum potential for 2021 some changes here first of all bit digital is gone here so we can see the maximum market cap forecast for end of 2021 from blonity here um yeah i'm i'm right now i'm focused on the pe ratio of 50 right now yeah and this here because um, i checked some companies they were there at 20 in 2017 for example the bitcoin group in germany it's not a miner it's an exchange it's very different but uh, they had a like a pe ratio of 50 at the peak of bitcoin so i would calculate right now with the 50 pe ratio i think they can go a lot higher maybe to sh very short term to 100 in the hype phase but i think 50 is very good for for an innovative uh, company here so we can see they should all, uh, they're all going to be a billion dollar companies, 10, 20 here, bit farms and Argo, like seven, eight billion. But um, yeah, we need, we need uh, the, the hash rates here. They disclosed, we need them operational. So this is very interesting whether they can do this or not. Again, no financial advice. Then we have the planetary share price forecast. Um, I mean, it's, it's um, dependent on the BMXI and we can see that, um, HUD8 has a big potential here in my forecast. Uh, I have blockchain 54 US dollars, um, HUD8 250, Bitfarms 54, Argo blockchain 21 US dollars, Mara 318 and Riot 345 US dollars. So the maximum leverage right now, what I can see is, um, yeah, so we have no triple digits anymore here. Because, yeah, we had that four weeks ago with Argo blockchain and HUD-8. They were above 100, so we are now lower. Um, so that means um, the increase, the possible increase of my uh, forecast, for the possible increase of the stock. So um, if here HUD-8, it says 24 here, the PA ratio of 50. So it means the stock can increase, in my opinion, 24 times this year from now. So if, if it's $1 right now, it could be at 24 at the end of the year. But Hive is right now at $3, so it could be at um, at 54. So, okay. So um, Hive 24x, HUD8 51x, Bitfarm 16x, Argo Blockchain 14x, Mara 14x, and Riot 13x. Again, guys, no financial advice. This is only a mind game. This is... Um, a potential here but it can be completely different i guess 
And yeah, please be aware that all models are wrong, but some are useful. George Box said this. This was a British statistician here. And yeah, very good, very good quote here, I guess. Okay, um, yeah, now we come to my performance here of my Blonity um, model and my Blonity portfolio and all this stuff. So how many eggs since the BMX version 0 0.3? This was mid of December. So we had these stocks here. And in the last week we were here, Argo was 12.2 times bigger than in mid of December. So in within four weeks or so, a 12x increase. Yeah, this week um, most of them dropped here. Uh, okay, not uh, bit farms. So Argo dropped a little bit from 12.2 to 11.5x. Bit farms increased from 7.2 to 8.1x. Very nice. Hard 8 from 5.7 to 4.2. Hive blockchain 3.2 to 2.7. So also decrease here. Also Mara decreased from 5.4 to 4.7. Okay, forget bit digital right now the only stock which increased uh, in the last seven days was riot blockchain from 2.9 to 3.0 so riot seems right now a very <laughs> uh, stable um, stock here it moves every day like 10 20 percent so this is very interesting yeah um okay so my blonde portfolio x since mid of december so the first week was 102 percent then 38 percent and 136 percent this was a my a great week here and the last week it was minus 10 percent so we're right now at 5x please be aware that this is all minus the expenses the the tax and so without tax i would be at 8x or so and i calculated from september what what my x are right now so it's right now 12x from September to now. So within three months, I made 12x with all my sto um, stocks here with my portfolio. Uh, most of it was Hive blockchain in the beginning, which was 10x. And uh, yeah, then I moved into Argo blockchain. Yeah, with Hive blockchain, I was two or three years in the bear market, I accumulated at the lows, but um, I was also in red. But yeah, then it pumped like 10x and I made a lot of money. I swapped it into Argo blockchain and then we had a 10x here and I made a lot of money. So that's why I'm 12x in the last three months. So I'm very happy about this. Um, great gains here. But I started to show you the, my portfolio four weeks ago. So we will track this number here. Again, guys, no financial advice. This is no, this does not have to be successful in the future, but right now it works very well. Okay, guys, especially because of the last week, I will tell you it's gonna be a rough ride. There will be 50% drops in one day. So last Monday we had HUD8 dropping like 40%. Um, yeah, these things happen. Can you handle this volatility? You su to succeed, you need a lot of know-how and nerves of steel. So last week, I think, um, it, I mean, it was not a big drop in, in Bitcoin, but um, people freaked out. Um, if you want to be successful in this game, you need um, patience here. Um, a 20, 30, 40% drop in one day. It should not make you nervous. Um, I think only the strong survive. It's like in the nature, um, only the, the strong will survive. They will make the huge gains and the weak hands will all drop out. So decide whether you want to be a weak hand or a strong. Do you want to be a whale or think like a whale or do you want to be like a mouse? That's um, what you have to think about. And yeah, if you choose the right one, you will be successful. But um, yeah, not it's not something for everyone here. It's, it's very tough, it could be very hard, it could be emotionally very tough, so please be aware of this. Okay, um, let's jump to my portfolio here. Um, so it looks like right now that HUD8 is my biggest position because on Monday HUD8 dropped 40%. I swapped a lot of these stocks here, of the US stocks and so on, on Argo blockchain into HUD8 to uh, make these gains from the 40% drop. And yeah, we recovered 50%, it was a good move, but uh, what was not good last week, um, I missed it to increase my cash position significant. I think I was on Thursday at 5% and I was waiting to Bitcoin to go to 41,000 to cash out a lot of stocks to get like 10 or 15%, but it was only at, it recovered only to 40,000 and I and then I had only 5% and I, I, I bought some Hive on Friday, but I should have, have a lot um, bigger cash position to make gains of these drops on Friday. So that's what I will do next time better. If we have a correction, use these short-term recoveries to get into cash and yeah, use the bottoms to buy. And th this was not good last week, but I think the, the move into HUD8 big was very good. 
Um, so um, it's only minus 10%, so I'm happy with this. And the goal right now is to get, again, diversified here. Um, I also like these, these small stocks here, like Care One or, or Ether Capital. These are staking companies. They want to um, make gains of um, Web 3.0, Ethereum, DeFi, and all the things. So this is very important to diversify into this direction. And I want to don't to have uh, I don't want to have bit digital right now. Um, yeah, but I will wait. I will be patient to swap into this direction. My model tells me this should be ideal here, but um, I will wait a little bit because uh, when you go too early, you will miss the the big gains. We know this that the price lags. So I hope that hard aid will next week or the week after. Um, when Bitcoin recovers, um, it will move very big. This is uh, what I hope. I think it will because the value is very high of HUD8. And um, when 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 HUD8 does a, a big uh, increase in price, I will swap into Argo blockchain, into Hive blockchain, and into these other companies here to be again more diversified. But I will be patient. On Monday, I will do nothing, I guess. Um, uh, I will wait um, and see what happens. Right now we're going sideways. So um, if Bitcoin makes a move, I will move too. But uh, be very patient. So guys, an overview here. So um, my BX, BMXI model, it works so far. It's it's green here. Uh, my I, The step two was to build an investment strategy with the BMXI. And this is my portfolio I showed you with the goal always adjust into the direction of the BMXI. BMXI tells you which one is undervalued. So you move slowly in always into this direction. So you're always lagging, but always the price is all also lagging. So this works very well. And yeah, the step three right now, and this is a very difficult step is, um, yeah, to um, how do to do it by, uh, on a mathematical um, uh, yeah point uh, to move into this undervalued stocks how do you do it uh, what time scale what amount of stock when do you swap which which uh, size of batches and all the things and yeah this is very difficult i'm working right now on this um, i want to use the standard distribution from gauss here it was a german mathemat mathematician here so um yeah if you have an overvalued stock and you want to go into an undervalued um, you start like this, start slowly with uh, small batches, increase, increase. Then you have a peak here and then you slow down again. So this is my goal here. But the question is, what is the time scale and what is the peak here? I think the peak could be something like if the, the, the stock drops in the BMXI to the, nevel, to the level of, the, of the, the competitor here, of this number is two or number three um, or number four so if it drops out of the the, the top number one two three um, so i think this could be the peak here um, I'm, I'm calculating it right now and the time scale this is very difficult um, but we can see that it, it often it lacks uh, two or three weeks or with argo four weeks mm, um, i think this will decrease this lagging because the market will mature so but um, i want to have a yeah a formula here which uh, tells me what's the exact was the perfect time scale and the perfect peak here so this is very difficult and it will need some time but this is what i'm working right now uh, and i'm working on a lot of other stuff on patreon i did a lot of analysis this weekend yeah a lot of things to do but if we have when we have step three i think uh, we have a great model to um, and we have all based on numbers no emotions and this is what i like um, because right now i i decide hmm, which one should i or, or when should i swap which batch into the other stock um so this should be number based and i will have it soon okay guys so now we're coming to the end uh, for the daily bmxi and portfolio updates please follow me on patreon it's patreon.com slash blonati um, right now there are more than 300 followers here and yeah thank you very much for this and i made a lot of of, of data and analysis this weekend uh, some videos uh, very exciting i guess about hud and, and other companies and yes it's it's one dollar a month so in my opinion this is nothing it's 12 bucks a year and if you make one good trade um, um, with this data here uh, when you make well, let's say a thousand bucks you have 100x uh, on this cost uh, on this expenses here so um, it's very cheap in my opinion 
it's good for me because I want to build my own business right now. I'm working with a web designer here. I mean, it costs a lot of money to build my own website and all the things. So, um, yeah, I think we both can uh, profit from this thing. Um, yeah. So please think about this. Um, I think Patreon is a good platform. But my goal is always to have my own website and I will have it in, in the upcoming month. And then we have the real data. We have a lot of dashboards. We have live data. It's going to be very exciting, but it will take some time. So Patreon is a good bridge to go there, I guess. So guys, I think uh, that's it for today. Um, yeah, the BMX, always exciting, I guess. I like it a lot. Um, I like your comments. I like this, this community here. This is so great. I learned so much from you. Thank you for everything from, for Twitter, for, for YouTube, the comments. You're great people and I think we will make huge gains in 2021. Um, but be patient, be strong, be a whale and then it will work. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen.